there's a radio repeater in this tree behind me. Do you see it? Come on, let's take a look. In this ammo can is my radio. Here's a solar panel. And that's my antenna. And inside is a UV8000 crossband repeater handheld with a little battery and charge controller. Come on, I'll show you how I built it. The biggest advantage to using this radio is that you only have to make one antenna penetration and you only have one battery adapter to deal with. There's a thousand other videos out there showing using two bow fungs with a, a cable that connects the two to make a repeater. Well, if you have two radios, you've got two batteries, two power supplies, and two antennas to have to deal with. With the 8000D, you have one radio that does the job of both of these. So you only have one battery connection and one antenna connection to have to make. If you didn't want the extended battery or solar panel, you could use a small case like this with that SMA to BNC adapter, put your antenna directly on this, tie your string to the little ring on the side and pull this whole thing up in a tree and be done with it. This is the TYT UV800D. There's also an E model out. I'm not really sure what the difference between the, the D and the E is. Uh, this is theoretically a 10 watt radio uh, based on some other videos that I've seen that actually seems to be mostly true. So let's call this, you know, eight or nine watts or so. That's great. And it's a dual band radio. Um, they're pretty inexpensive. This particular package I'm holding in my hand was about $90. So it's the price of two Baofeng radios. But it has a really interesting feature. If you see right here, it says cross band repeater function. One piece of equipment. You have an incoming signal on VHF which is approximately 145 megahertz. And coming out the other side, it rebroadcasts on UHF, which is approximately 440 to 460 megahertz, thereabouts. And the process also works in reverse. It comes in UHF and goes out VHF. And here is the radio. So what I've got here, this particular package came with a battery eliminator. So this takes the place of the existing battery pack and gives me a cigarette plug. As you figure, this is a plastic ammo can. I got this from Harbor Freight because they were cheap there. And I discovered that a seven amp hour battery actually fits just perfectly in this thing vertically. So that's what I'm going to do. Just so you can get a better look, these are the locking 55 2.1 connectors that I use. So you've got a long stem and then this has got this little collar right here. Water resistant, not waterproof. So I got the female here with a little lead. This goes to the charge controller. One of the most useful tools is a step bit and this came from Harbor Freight. This is the small one and I really like it. It's got very narrow steps. So I'm marking the holes for the charge controller and making sure that they don't get in the way of where the battery is. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, give me a thumbs up and put a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification. It really helps me out a lot. Thanks. One of my goals is to make as few holes on the outside of the box as possible. So I'm going to have 
and but the, this is not going to be waterproof, but hopefully water resistant if it gets sprinkled on. So I'm going to put the charge controller input and my antenna port here on the front. And go really slow because you only get one chance. Just perfect. Now on a charge controller, you've got three sets of terminals. This is the solar power input, this is the battery output, and this is your load output. Now this is an incredibly cheap charge controller. Get that, I understand that. So the load output terminal over here is programmable, uh, typically for things like turn on only when the sun is shining. So, you know, if the solar panel is not getting voltage coming in, then this will turn itself off. I don't want that. I want it to run 24 seven. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take my little cigarette adapter and I'm gonna put it on top of these middle terminals that go to the battery. Uh, so basically this is running off the battery at all times and then the solar panels inputs coming in here and then I'm getting 12 or 13 volts out going to the battery and also to this. But that's within vehicle tolerances, so I'm not worried about this getting too much voltage. So I've got two leads going into the battery terminal. One that's going to my battery, one that's here for my socket for my battery eliminator. <clears throat> then this little pigtail, which goes to my locking connector for my panel. And the final piece, which you haven't seen, is this pigtail, which came from Amazon. This is an SMA female, uh, SMA male to a BNC female, and this is going to be the penetration for the box uh, for the antenna that's going uh, out of the radio. I decided I'm going to go ahead and put the antenna connection up top across from the charge controller. I don't want to have a bend that hard. Even though this battery fits in there pretty tight, uh, because it's so heavy, one of the things I like to do is put a little Velcro on it uh, just to stop it from bouncing around too far. I'll typically either put it on the bottom or on the side, depending upon how the layout is. So, got this great little roll of Velcro. I think with this, what I'm gonna do is put it against the back wall and just smash it against the back as far as I can. And then before I push that on there, I'm gonna go ahead and connect the battery terminals. Pushed up against the back. charge controller feed the locking connector through and go ahead and screw it down loosely and feed the screws through Inside. Got my little cigarette socket laying down inside there. And now I'm going to take my BNC adapter. Here's my TYT 8000D, the cigarette uh, battery eliminator. I'm going to take a little pigtail of the SMA. Screw into the top and the cigarette socket for the battery eliminator. And look at that, radio is live. It is still a little snug in there, but uh not horrendous. 
one of the things that I should have done is put a override fuse on the battery, like a four amp fuse, just in case something shorts out inside here, I don't start a forest fire. Uh, that would be a real bad thing. But there's my radio, Got my battery eliminator, charge controller, my external antenna, and here is my external power port for my solar panel. And there you go. There is a fully assembled solar powered crossband repeater. For the antenna, this is a either a comet or a diamond with a right angle BNC. Or what I would actually use, this is a roll up dual band J pole that I got off of eBay for about 30 bucks. And it's got a really long, really long tail on it. And I, I put a new lanyard at the top because uh, the factory one ripped out. But this has got a really long tail and it's dual band. I've checked the SWR on it. It's beautiful. So I could put this at the base of a tree with a panel next to it, get some fish string and a weight, chuck this up in a tree, get it up high and have good dual band reception elevated up in the air with... My little BNC connection right there, and my solar input over here. This is certainly not waterproof, but since I don't have any uh, cuts on the top, um, you know, if it gets misted on, I wouldn't sweat it all that bad. So, there you have it. There is a solar powered crossband repeater.